Question number two. As a prospective member of the 112th Congress, what will be your position in any effort to repeal health care reform? We're going to go to Mr. Well, let me just say this. First of all, I was opposed to the uh, legislation that passed a couple of weeks ago for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, it was just simply something that small business in America cannot afford in its current form. But having worked at a medical center for several years, I understand the need for health care. I remember at our medical center we had between 17 and 18,000 visitors per year to our ER where we pull teeth and deliver babies and all kinds of things. More than 460,000 Arkansans are without health care. So certainly things need to be done. But the thing that I learned years ago when I went to, to the legislature is that we can't afford everything that might sound needed or noble. If we can't afford it, we can't afford it. I drive an older model Jeep with 95,000 miles on it, though I'd like to have a new one, I just can't afford a new one. So the thing that we have to understand is there are ways in which we can get there. Progress needs to be made. Promises need to be kept, not only to our veterans that are coming back from fighting uh, on, on behalf of our freedom and health care needs there, to our senior citizens. My mother and daddy have been married 52 years, and they worked hard on the small farm all of their life, and the promises made to those we need to keep. So we need to make some progress in that area. And there are ways in which we can do that by unbundling this mess and making a change. Well, health care. Health care, that's something that's uh, uh, very dear to me. I've spent my entire life being a physician and surgeon and trying to help people. I wanted to be a hero of people. Sometimes ended up like a goat, but at least I spent my life trying to help human problems and fix broken bones. Well, this health care bill now is law, like it or not. And it's not going to be repealed. That's not going to happen. What we can do and what I can do is help massage it and manipulate it to get it where the health care bill will be a blessing and not a curse. And for darn sure, if the government's going to buy health care for somebody, it's got to be for the guy that works and pays taxes. Because other people are getting free medical care that don't work and don't pay taxes. And it's just something not fundamentally right about that. It's expensive, and I know the government is promising more than they can keep. And that's going to be a problem for the next speaker. <laughs> <laughs>
Dr. Green, it's it's not realistic. Uh, the calls for repeal uh, aren't just simply aren't legislatively realistic. What we have is a law, and we have to work to make that law better. Uh, what we were at a all, all of us were at a candidates forum in Newport uh, a couple nights ago, and one of our colleagues on the on, on the Republican side made made this statement: uh, the the health care legislation did nothing to advance health care in America. That's patently untrue. So what, what we have, what I think I, I think the folks uh, sitting up here tonight, we're, we're, we're reasonable uh, people. And, and so you see that everything has its good parts and its bad parts. I, I've spent a lot of time, of course, working in healthcare, and then uh, even have, have talked about it pretty extensively and have, have posted uh, some videos on, on my website, benponder.com, where I go into great detail about uh, my seven primary uh, proposals to help that healthcare legislation become better. I can't. I don't have time to talk about all of those now, but but real briefly, just to touch on a couple, we've got to create an incentive for health insurers to actually serve policyholders rather than just their shareholders. Secondly, we've got to make sure that doctors are paid to listen to us as their patients and understand our symptoms rather than simply being paid to run tests and procedures because that makes more money. There are several other ones and uh, we'll talk about them later. Thank you. I believe one thing that we know is that with the passage of this health care bill, it is not the end of working on the cost of health care in this country. We will be doing this for years to come. Everyone knows health care costs too much for individuals, for families. It costs too much for our government to sustain. We have problems with the cost of health care in this country. And we've got a lot of work to do. We've got to lower the price of prescription drugs in this country. I've seen seniors make the real decision to fill a prescription for pay like that shouldn't happen in this country. We've got to work on this together. And I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and go there to work on this issue. There's certainly reforms that need to happen with this piece of legislation. We've got to ensure that costs are contained. We have over $12 trillion in debt, and we've got to make sure we don't bankrupt ourselves. But I'm ready to work on this. Thank you. How many of y'all know what's in that health care bill? I don't know everything that's in it. And the media called me and said, well, how would you vote on that health care bill? I said, well, you're talking to me like I'm a coach up the bleachers there. I'm a good coach up there in the bleachers, right, coach? You get on that sideline and get in there and figure out what it's all about. And the, the coach knew, and those folks up there knew working on it. I, if I had to push that button and sit there, I would have voted for this bill. And the reason is, let's get something out there, let's work on it. You know, as far as mandating health care, for everybody, that doesn't come effect in 2014. We've got time, folks. We've got time to massage this thing. Right now, though, what does go in effect is our seniors at Donut Hole is going to be closed. And insurance companies cannot just drop you or cannot deny you because of pre-existing condition. Those are great things in that bill. There's some good things in there. So we need to take it, work on it, and make it even better. And I think that I'm the guy that goes there and did that. I'm not going to sit around and just say, well, let's, let's let this happen, let's let that happen. We've got to look at it, we've got to work it, we've got to make it affordable and accessible so that everyone out there can have good health. Thank you.